Hello, welcome to FM Tuition Center. This is Teacher Frank. I'm teaching you physics, chemistry, biology, English, RE. Any type of tuitions that you want to learn, we offer them here at FM Tuition Academy. But today, to be more specific, we are centering on the physics past paper. It came the 2016 past paper. That's what I'm going to be discussing. So it doesn't matter where you're watching me from in Zambia. You can be watching me from any province in Zambia. You can be watching me from northern, southern, eastern, any province, and you want to do online tuitions. You simply comment your phone number, and our team will get a hold of you. Okay? So, today we're looking at the examination past paper, the science past paper. So, we are learning science today, and we're looking at the 2016 past paper. We're going to discuss it. Make sure if you want to do tuitions with us, comment your phone number and our team will get a hold of you in any subject that you want to do. Just comment your phone number. So let's go direct into the past paper and solve the question. So the first question that came in paper 2, 2016, this was a question. The diagram below shows three states of matter. As you can see the way they are arranged, this is a solid this is a liquid and that is a gas. Why? Because particles in a, in a solid are closely packed. You remember in the term, we learned about the kinetic theory of matter. That states that matter is made up of particles that are in constant motion. As you can see here, these particles in a solid are closely packed and they vibrate about their fixed position. This is a liquid, okay? And particles in a liquid, they are not as closely packed as in a solid. They are a little bit far apart. And then, lastly, particles in a liquid, in a gas, this is a gas, they are far apart from one another. But let's go and start doing the answering of this question. State the name given to the change. Okay? State the name given to the change of state A. What is the change of state A? Have you seen? From, I said you label them. They are not labeled for you, but you... you by looking at the pictorial view, the way they look, you can know that this is actually a solid, and then this is actually a liquid, okay? And this is actually a gas, okay? So A, it means from a, from a liquid to a gas, what does it take? Liquid to a gas, what change of state is that? What process is that? Evaporation. So A is actually evaporation, okay? A is actually evaporation. What about B? B, it is from a liquid to a solid. This is called freezing. Okay? This is called freezing. This is called freezing. Okay. Describe the movement of particles in a gas. How is the movement of particles in a gas according to the kinetic theory of matter? According to the kinetic theory of matter, the particles in a gas are far apart from each other compared to the liquid and solid. And the intermolecular forces of attraction, the intermolecular forces of attraction is weakest among the molecules and, and among the particles. Okay, so according to the kinetic theory of, of matter, the particles in a, in a gas, they are far apart from one another and as compared to the liquid and the solid, and the intermolecular forces of attraction in the gas, they are, it's very weak. So in a gas, 
the intermolecular forces of attraction, according to the kinetic theory of matter, the intermolecular forces of attraction in gas, they are the weakest. Hence, the gas particles, they are able to move far apart from one another. They are the weakest intermolecular forces of attraction in the gas. Okay? Lastly, which of the following changes, A, B, or C, is endothermic? Is endothermic. The first thing you need to know is what is an endothermic reaction? Endothermic. What type of reaction is endothermic? A reaction that gives heat to the surrounding. An endothermic reaction, it is a reaction that releases heat to the surrounding. Okay? When you release heat to the surrounding, it's, a, it's endothermic. I've made a mistake. Actually, that is exothermic. Exo, it means to release heat. In indo, it means to absorb. So, a reaction that absorbs, not that releases, a reaction that absorbs. Okay, not, not releases. Endo, it means inside. It means you're absorbing. Exo, exit. So, it means you're releasing heat. So, this is endothermic reaction. A reaction that absorbs heat from the surrounding. Okay, so which of the which 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 of these reactions A, B, or C absorbs heat from the surrounding for it to take place? Okay, for a liquid to become a solid, do you need to absorb heat for a liquid to become a solid? No, you don't need to absorb heat. But for a liquid to become here, it's a, a is liquid to become a gas. Do you need to absorb heat? For a liquid to become a gas. Yes. Why? Because when you heat a liquid, it will gain in temperature. Hence, the liquid has to be converted to a gas. So it means air needs heat. It needs to absorb heat for it to take place. Because a liquid needs too much heat for it to be converted to a gas. So it simply means reaction A. The reaction what? Which of the changes A, B, or C? Which of the changes, A, B, or C, is endothermic? Reaction what? A. Why? Because, because, for a liquid to be converted to a gas, Heat is absorbed to vibrate the liquid molecules. To vibrate the liquid molecules to be converted to gas particles. Okay, to be converted to gas particles. That's a reason. That's the only reason. Because a liquid, because for a liquid to be converted to a gas, heat is absorbed to vibrate liquid particles, to vibrate the liquid molecules to be converted to gas particles. Okay, that's it. Okay, so we go on the next question. We are wrapping this question. We are going on the next one, guys. We are going on the next one. So, what's the next question, guys? Let's go on the next question. We'll wrap this. This was question one. Let's go on question two. Those ones are watching from the private WhatsApp group. As you are watching, make sure you comment so I know that you are actually understanding this lesson. Thank you very much. So, we are going on question two. So that you guys can eat these questions and make sure you're able to understand. Okay, let's go on question two. Question two. Let me write question two for you. Question two. What does question two say? Say. Question two. This is question two. The table shows apparatus used in the lab. 
the table below shows the apparatus apparatus used in the laboratory okay the table below shows the apparatus used in the laboratory so this is a table it shows the apparatus that you use in the lab when you're in the lab what kind of apparatus do you use this table shows the apparatus that you use in the laboratory okay so it shows the apparatus that you frequently use in the laboratory okay the first one here is separating funnel here is written separating funnel okay down is what uh disincator disketer disincator disketer that is a dis a dis a disincator here a disketer here about evaporating evaporating dish okay we are done here the next ones there what do we have live big condenser that is a live big condenser there the live big condenser there we have got a volumetric flask volumetric flask we have got a benzen burner that is a benzen burner there the benzen burner Okay, and then the others this side, the pipette, the pipette is there, we have got the, the laboratory thermometer, laboratory thermometer, okay, lastly the burette, the burette. View rate. View rate. View rate. Okay. The view rate. Okay. The question is that state state the apparatus. State the apparatus for the following. State the apparatus for the following. A burning and burning and heating okay burning and heating that is a b preparation of standard volume preparation of standard molar volume Preparation of standard molar solution. Okay, that is B. C. All these are patients. C. Obtaining a distillate from a vapor of liquid. Obtaining a distillate from a vapor of liquid. From a vapor of liquid you need to write this is a past paper so you have to write make sure we clear understanding okay so we go on question d question d is drying substances or keeping them free from moisture drying substances or keeping them keeping them free from moisture e measuring exactly 25 cubic centimeter of solution measuring exactly 25 cubic centimeters of solution okay we can start so this these are the questions guys so let's let's work on them okay so question two of the 2016 past paper this is it so this is question two the question two states 
The, the table below shows the apparatus used in the laboratory. You remember at our schools we have, or rather we have laboratories at secondary schools, and these are the apparatus that you use in the secondary school laboratory. There is separating funnel, discator, evaporating uh, dish, rugby condenser, volumetric flask, Bunsen burner, pipette, and so on. So these are the ones that you use. So with respect to these instruments and apparatus that we're using in the lab, they're asking you, from what they're giving us down here, which of these instruments is used for each function? Like for example, the burning and the heating. Which of these do you use for burning and heating? You have, you have done biology. You have seen when you're doing biology, you bore certain time, you bore certain type of uh, chemicals and use a benzene burner to do that. So it means you select benzene burner. That's the one that burns and heats chemicals in the lamp. So here you put benzene, the benzene burner there. You put the benzene burner. Okay? You put the benzene burner. That's the one that you use there. You put the benzene what? Burner. Okay? The benzene burner, that's the one that is used. The benzene burner. Okay, that's all that you use. Okay, the next thing, preparation of standard molar solutions. What do you use when you're, when you're preparing standard molar solutions? Do you use a discator, evaporating this, bus and burner, volumetric flask, direct, standard volumes. If you don't have the standard, you don't have standard volumes, you use a what? You use a Volumetric flask. So for standard volume, you use volumetric flask. Volumetric flask. Why volumetric flask? Volumetric flask have got a specific standard volume. Okay? The next part is obtaining a distillate from a vapor of solution. This is distillation. And when I when I dealing with distillation, it means you are converting gas to liquid. And the only apparatus that is used for such kind of an experiment, it is what? The rugby condenser. We talk about uh, certain distillations that take place for easy, easy like uh, fermentation and so on. So you use the rugby condenser. So the rugby condenser is the one that is used for distillation purposes. So here we put the rugby The lab big condenser. It is used for distillation. Condenser it means to condense. It means to convert from leak from from gas to to liquid. Okay. Now, D, drying substances or keeping them from moisture. Which apparatus of these apparatus listed here? Which of them is used for drying substances? It is the discanter. Discanter. The discanter, what it does is, you have seen a discanter. It op it operates. It's like a a discanter. A simple illustration of a discanter. It's like a warmer. You see the warmer the way it is. What a warmer does is, when you put food in a warmer, it it shields the food from the atmosphere. Now a discanter that works is when you put uh, chemicals or substances in it, it shields those substances. From the, from the substances interacting with the atmospheric moisture. So in the atmosphere, there is moisture. So when you put uh, chemicals in a discanter, the discanter what it does, it shields those substances from the moisture. That's its purpose, to shield substances from moisture because moisture it means water content. Lastly, measuring exact 25 cubic centimeters of solution. What do you use that? What instrument do you use that for? A pipette. That's the one that is used for, for, for measuring 25 or 20 cubic centimeters. So it's either 25 or 20 cubic centimeters. Don't get confused. Because this, in chemistry, there's what you call titration. So when you're doing titration, you, be, you find that you are actually dealing with volumetric analysis. So you'll be dealing with titration formulas. And you need to pipette 25 or 20 cubic centimeters of a base 
and this experiment is done under practicals. So those ones have done practicals, you, you begin to understand that actually you always use 25 or 20 cubic centimeters and you always use an instrument called a pipette. So this is question two. So we are done with question two. Let's go to question three, guys. So I'm having question two. We are going to question three. So question three of the 2016 past paper. Okay, so we are home and dry. Gonna get some distinctions since you are doing a lot of practice of different questions. As I said, if you're watching me, you want to do some online tuitions in physics, chemistry, biology, maths, or English, comment your phone number and our team will get a hold of you. So guys, let's go to the second question, the third question rather. This is a third question. It keeps getting interesting, guys. Third question, question three. Question three. We need to solve all the questions so that we have a clear understanding. Question three. Given, given below the list of substances, given below the list of sub substances, we have got aluminium there, we have got bronze, okay, we have got nitrogen here. We have got water, we have got cement, we have got methanol, methanol, we have got seawater, we have got potassium, potassium, Chloride, we have got seawater here. Seawater. Mm -hmm. Okay, first question. Which substance is an element? Which substance is an element from this list? Which substance is an element? That is question A. Question B. Which substance is a single compound? Which substance is a single compound? Which substance is a single, is, is a single compound? Which substance is a mixture? That is C. Which substance is a mixture. C. D. Which which element conducts electricity? Which substance conducts electricity? Okay. E from the list select an A is from the from the above list select one An ionic compound to an alloy. Okay, I'll start with this the last two because they are very easy to do. Because you need to know what um, what this is. So you need to what you need to know what this is. Okay, uh, who we'll start? Let's start. Which substance is an element? Which substance is an element here? Which of these substances is an element? Simple. Aluminium. As you can see this list of elements. So the, the first one, aluminium is actually an element. So aluminium is an element. 
Okay. Next question. Which substance is a single compound? Is a single compound. Which of this is a, which of this is a single compound? Uh, there is nitrogen there. There is cement. Nitrogen gas is a single compound. How do you know? Because nitrogen is a diatomic particle. So it means two molecules of nitrogen are combining with themselves. So that's a single compound because nitrogen is not combined with any other element. It's just combining with itself. So it means nitrogen is actually a single compound. So select nitrogen from that list. Nitrogen is a single compound. Why? Because nitrogen is combining with itself. Okay? Question C. Which substance is a mixture? What is a mixture? First, you need to know the difference between a mixture and a compound. A compound is a substance formed when two or more substances are chemically combined and cannot be separated. Why a mixture is a substance formed when two or more substances are physically put together? So, which of these is actually a mixture? There is cement there, there is bronze, there is water, there is uh, methanol. Okay, this is going to be tough for us. So, which of these is actually a mixture? There is seawater, there is water, there is bronze. Okay, let's leave this for now. Let's go on the next one. Which substance conducts electricity? Of these ones, which of these can conduct electricity? Seawater can conduct electricity. Why? Because in seawater there are ions. So it means seawater can conduct electricity. Seawater. Seawater can conduct electricity because in seawater you are going to find salt. And salt is a mixture of sodium and, co and, and chlorine, and those are positive and negative ions, which allow the movement and transfer of electrons, thereby producing electric current. So, let's go on E. E, from the table list, select an ionic compound. So, you need to know, because ionic compound is coming from a topic called bonding. Bonding, it simply means, bonding is when two or more elements are chemically combined and there are two types of bonding there is ionic bonding and covalent bonding however there's also metallic bonding but it's for those ones who are doing pure sciences but those ones who are doing ordinary sciences we just treat to ionic bonding and covalent bonding so here it's written ionic bonding which of these from the list above list one that is an ionic bond an ionic bond is a bonding between a metal and a non-metal so if you look at the compounds or the elements, the substances that are listed in our list, the ionic bond here, it is this one, potassium chloride. How do you know it's an ionic bond? Because potassium is a solid, while chlorine is a, a non-element. So it means this is a metal and a non-metal. So potassium is a metal, chlorine is a non-metal. So a bonding between a metal and a non-metal is an ionic bonding. Therefore, we select potassium chloride here. So, it is potassium chloride. On Friday, we'll be dealing with bonding, so it will be very easy for you to understand. So, this is it. What do you have there? We are having potassium chloride. Okay, potassium chloride. Okay, potassium chloride. What about an alloy? Which of these is an alloy? Bronze. Bronze is an alloy. Bronze is an alloy. Bronze is an alloy. Which of the following is a mixture? Cement. So there, on which substance is a, is a mixture, we'll put cement. Okay. We are done. We are done. So this is, this is uh, question three. And then now I'm going to look at the last question now. The last question, guys. The last question. The last question... 
Should it be the last question tomorrow or we finish it today? Let's look at how much time we have. Um, no, we can finish the last question. We will solve fast. We will finish the last question. So, let's look at the last question in science. We need to finish this so that we look at another type of topic. Not uh, in past paper. We look at something else next time. So, let's finish the last question. We are going to move at a good speed. So, this is question 4. Uh, explain what is meant by limiting reactant. Okay. Explain what is meant by limiting reactant limiting reactant okay limiting reactant okay that is question a explain what is meant by limiting reactant question b what is question b say 2.4 2.4 grams of Magne this is more concept. I, uh, it's very easy. It's not even something very hard. So this is 2.4 grams of magnesium reacts with 0 0.3 moles of hydrochloric of hydrochloric acid. Uh -huh. First question. Write the balanced chemical equation for the reaction. Write the balanced chemical equation for the reaction. Okay, that's the first question. Question two. Determine the limiting reactant. Determine the limiting reactant. Question three, which is the last one. Calculate the mass Calculate the, the mass in axis, which is in axis, which is in axis. Calculate the mass in axis for the substance which is in axis. Okay. Okay. This is a. Uh... Okay. That is uh, not a problem. So let's let's start. Explain what is meant by uh, the first. The first question is talking about limiting reactant. So the first question is talking about the limiting. Reactant. So I say, explain what is meant by limiting reactant. A limiting reactant, to make you guys understand what a limiting reactant is, I use natural, uh, the, the natural explanation, such as, for example, if you are in the kitchen, you are cooking shima. Okay? So, when you are cooking shima, what do you need? You need water, you need milimin. Okay? So, when you are cooking shima, you need milimin and water. Okay? And you as well need what? You need a cooking stick, for example. You need a cooking stick. So it means you need millimil and water. So it means millimil and water, they are reactants. Why? Because you are reacting millimil and you are also reacting water. You are combining millimil and water. So millimil and water, they are reacting together. So they are reactants forming shima. However, a limiting reactant is... A reactant, when it finishes, the whole reaction stops. Okay? So, which of the two 
could be considered to be a limiting uh, reactant of a tool. Mainly because you need to combine millimil and water to form shima. So if there's no millimil or if the millimil is, is less, it means shima is not going to be produced. That's a simple explanation of what a, limit, a, a, a limiting reactant is. A limiting reactant is a reactant whereby if it finishes, then the chemical reaction stops and no products will be produced. Okay? You understand? So that's how it works. So that's what a limiting reactant is. So we are going to define a limiting reactant. It is a reactant that when it finishes, it is a reactant when it is a reactant that when it a, re, a limiting reactant, it is a reactant when it is when it finishes. Yeah, a limiting reactant is a reactant when it finishes, the reaction stops and no product is produced. Okay, so it means once a limiting reactant, a limiting reactant finishes, once it finishes, when the limiting reactant finishes, it means no more products will be produced. You cannot... The, the reaction simply stops. So whatever you are doing, once the limiting reactant finishes, it means, so wh whatever elements are reacting, if one of them finishes before the other one, it means the reaction will stop. So the one that finishes first is what is called the finishing, a, a limiting reactant. Sometimes it's referred to as a limiting reagent. So it means it finishes first in any chemical reaction. If you're reacting two or uh, two, three, or four, or five substances. Of the th of the five substances, the first one that that runs out in that reaction is what is called a limiting reactant. Why? Because it will limit the other reactants from reacting so as to produce the products. That's what a limiting reactant is. A limiting reactant is the reactant which finishes first in a chemical reaction, thereby no more products will be produced. So, it is a reactant, when it finishes, the reaction stops and no more products is produced. It finishes first in a chemical reaction. Okay, now we, call, we come here, 2.4 grams of magnesium reacts with 0 0.3 moles of sodium chloride. Write the balanced chemical equation for the reaction. So, we are reacting magnesium. We are reacting magnesium plus hydrochloric acid. Okay, so it means this is a chemical reaction. So magnesium is reacting with hydrochloric acid. What do you do? I talked about chemical formulas where you use valences. So we are reacting magnesium is reacting with hydrochloric acid. In the previous teachings, I taught concerning chemical formulas that when writing chemical formulas, you need valences. So what is the atomic number for magnesium? Magnesium has got atomic number 12. So when you write an electronic configuration, it's going to be 2,8,2. So it means the valence for magnesium there is actually 2. And then down here we always put 1, 1. Chlorine, atomic number is 17. So it means the electronic configuration, it is 2,8, what? Let me write them here because maybe people are getting confused. So this is magnesium, atomic number of magnesium based. It is what? 12. Electronic configuration, it is 2,8,2. 2. So it means the valence for magnesium is 2. This is a 2 that is here. Chlorine. Chlorine, it is 17. So it is electronic configuration, it is 2,8,7. Valency is what? It is 8 minus 7. If the number at the end is greater than 4, it's either 5, 6, 7, or 8. You only subtract from 8 to get the valence. So meaning the valence is 1. Okay? So when you're writing the chemical formula, 
How do you write it? This magnesium comes to remove the hydrogen here. So when magnesium removes the hydrogen, it means magnesium is combining with chlorine. So it means the reaction, I'll write it here because I went, we're not, there's no space inside, I want you to see. So I'll write magnesium here. Magnesium, okay? I'll write magnesium for you to understand. I'll say magnesium, have you seen? Magnesium what? Is combining with chlorine here. So it's magnesium combining with chlorine. So it's one magnesium, one magnesium. What's the balance for magnesium? Two. As you can see, the balance for magnesium is two. The balance for chlorine here is what? One. Then you cross multiply. So it's magnesium chloride. You see? Magnesium chloride is written like this. Magnesium chloride. So it means when these two combine, it means this magnesium will react with the chlorine here and remove the hydrogen. So it means hydrogen will come out here. It will be substituted. So magnesium takes out the hydrogen. So here it will be magnesium combining with chlorine, which is magnesium chloride. And the simplification is here, which is like that. Plus, this hydrogen cannot remain. It will combine with itself, which will be hydrogen too. So it will be a diatomic particle. So it will be hydrogen twice combining with itself so is it balanced then you balance the chemical equation how do you balance hydrogen is one hydrogen is two so you put two in front here so that hydrogen is two hydrogen is two magnesium is one magnesium is one chlorine is two here it means this two is also for chlorine that means this chemical equation has been balanced okay this is the chemical equation. Okay, I said magnesium is combining with hydrochloric acid, so magnesium checks out the hydrogen, so it combines with the chlorine. And this is hydrogen and chlorine, and then you use valences to calculate the chemical formula. Okay, so we are done. So I'll wrap this, but you need to write this. Okay? You need to write this in your calculations. This will help you. This calculation will help you because this calculation helps you to find this. You do not guess this. For you to write this, you need to have knowledge of valences and atomic numbers, which is what I was explaining this side. Okay, so this part, you need to write it here on top so that it helps you to come to this reaction. This chemical equation rather. Okay, so I'll wrap this for the sake of, I need to answer this question, but you need to write this calculation here. Okay, determine the limiting rea uh, 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 reagent. Before I answer this one, I'll answer this one first. Before I answer this one, I'll answer the last one. Calculate the mass in axis. You remember, there's a formula to use for moles. So, number of moles. Number of moles is equal to given mass over molar mass. Okay? The number of moles we have is what? Here is written calculate the mass in axis, which is in axis. So it means which of these masses is in axis? It's automatic. You already know the mass that is in axis. Just by looking, if they say determine the limiting, before I even do this, determine the, the limiting reactant, it means the one that will finish first, you are reacting magnesium and hydrochloric acid here. Just by looking at this, magnesium, they said is 2.4. The mass of magnesium here, guys, is 2.4. This mass is 2.4. One more. You understand? So this is 2.4. The mass is 2.4 for magnesium. 2.4, like that. But chlorine, this is hydrochloric acid. Have you seen this hydrochloric acid? Because the mass for chlorine, it is 35.5. And the mass for hydrogen is 1. And adding the sum, multiplying it by 2, it will be a bigger mass than this. So automatically, magnesium will finish before this one finishes. Why? Because magnesium, the mass is only 2.4. The mass here is only 2.4. 2.4 grams of magnesium. 
It cannot, it will finish before this hydrochloric acid finishes. So it means the one that will limit this reaction is the magnesium because there's less magnesium to finish this reaction. So it means magnesium is a limiting factor or a, a, a limiting uh, reactant or reagent in this reaction. It will, it will finish before all the chlorine or all the hydrochloric acid has been consumed. So meaning the limiting reagent here is actually magnesium. How did I know that it's magnesium? By looking at the molar masses of these compounds. Magnesium is 2.4 grams, but hydrochloric acid, it has got a larger mass, so it cannot easily be consumed. So as I said, the last question is calculate the mass in access, what is, which is in access. So the number of moles is what? The number of moles was 0 0.3. So on the moles there, I put 0 0.3. On the mass, we we'll put X. We do not know the mass. And then on the molar mass, the molar mass of which compound? We are finding the molar mass of this compound. Why that compound? Because that's the one that is in access, meaning there's more of it. Okay? Because there are two reactants. We are reacting magnesium and hydrochloric acid. So we are going to find the molar mass for hydrochloric Because of there's no space, I'll write the calculation here. For down here, you write it here. But you write it down here because it's for the last question. So what's the molar mass for 2H2H2? So how do you write that? You factorize, you factor out the 2. What's the molar mass for hydrogen? It's 1. Plus, what's the molar mass for chlorine? 35.5. So, 2 times 36.5. What is that 6.5 by 2? So, you get your calculator, you punch your calculator, you find out what 36.5 by 2 is. So, what is 36.5 by 2? 36.5 times 2, guys. It is actually 73. 73. So it is 73. 73. So here it is actually 73. Then you make X a subject, you cross multiply. So it means 1 times X, X is equal to 73 times 0 0.3. What's the answer? 73 times 0 0.3. 73 times 0 0.3. 73 times 0 0.3. 73 by okay 73 times 0 0.3 21.9 grams that's the answer 21.9 grams is the answer 20, 29.9 grams 20, 20, 29 21.9 grams that's the answer so that's how you substitute and that's how you work with this formula the formula is number of moles is equal to the given mass over the molar mass. So they said calculate the mass in axis. Which of these two was axis? Was it magnesium? Was it hydrochloric acid? We said magnesium has got a less mass. So it means the axis one here on the reactants is uh, hydrochloric acid. You calculate the molar mass for hydrochloric acid, which is this one, by using atomic uh, relative atomic masses. So when you do, when you use relative atomic masses, it will give you what's the rate of atomic mass for hydrogen is 1 plus rate of atomic mass for chlorine is 35.5. When you add the sum, you multiply by 2, which is outside. So it means this is 2 moles. So the sum of the, of, 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 of the masses, when you multiply it with the number of moles outside, it will give you the total molecular mass for hydrochloric acid. And then that's the one that you substitute in this formula. Here is written molar mass. So that's the molar mass you put down. Then you make X a subject. And then that will give you 21.9. We end here.